Welcome to the Oberlin Conservatory Stage Left. My name is Katharina Meitz, and I have been Associate Professor of Baroque Cello, uh, Viola da Gamba, and Modern Cello for over 40 years. This last semester was my last semester uh, teaching, and I'm retiring. It was very sad to have it be this way. Um, I felt a little bit like all the graduates who were deprived of a nice commencement. I didn't, I, I had a, an interesting end of my career. Um, but uh, I, at least I'm going to be continuing doing some work in the next month. Uh, starting June 22nd, the annual uh, Oberlin Baroque Performance Institute will be starting. Uh, it's uh, a summer workshop that uh, back in 1972, my husband James Caldwell and I started. We wanted to have a workshop where people could come from all over the country and in fact all over the world to learn to play uh, their Baroque equivalent of their instrument. So if they were a violinist, they would come and learn to play Baroque violin. Oboist, Baroque oboe, even voice would learn to come and find out the appropriate way of singing Baroque music. So there was a lot of information about performance practice and history and context and uh, social norms, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people came for multiple summers uh, and in between they would go home and they would teach their friends what they had been learning and they would start ensembles that they would play in, including now there are quite a number of Baroque orchestras all over the country and almost all of them had some connection to Oberlin in some way or another. So we felt we've done a lot uh, in the 49 years, this will be year 49, uh, to reach people. Uh, so we were very pleased when Early Music America, which is the uh, prominent uh, organization for early music in America, uh, reward us with the Lorette Goldberg uh, Excellence in Outreach uh, Award, which was a very nice recognition of, of the way we have touched so many people in this country. This year being different, uh, Kenneth Slowick, our, our music director, has worked extremely hard to find a way to make it viable. Um, he has a program where uh, for free you'll be able to uh, see uh, every day for the week starting the 22nd there'll be something, uh, an archival concert or tape of some sort to hear or, or watch. Uh, and then if people want to register to really be part of BPI they can uh, do, partake in master classes or in uh, uh, private lessons, uh, continual classes, et cetera, et cetera. All the information is on the Oberlin Conservatory website. And uh, you just go to the summer programs, Baroque Performance Institute, and you'll, you'll find all the information about it if you're interested. So to celebrate the coming BPI, uh, I'm going to have a, a performance here of two movements of the first Bach sonata in G major uh, by, uh, uh, with, with Mark Edwards, the professor of harpsichord at Oberlin here, and me. Uh, we did this performance quite recently. In fact, it was on March 12th, um, and it was March 13th that turned out to be the last day of classes and everybody went home that weekend. So it was a very bittersweet event, but I'm so glad we had a chance to do it. Uh, so while those uh, audio recordings are being played, you'll be seeing pictures of activities at BPI, things that people do and uh, try to get a feel of what the real BPI is like and what we'll be missing so much this year. Uh, after you listen to those. I'll be coming back and talking about a different aspect of my career and, and speak with a couple of my former students. So uh, uh, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in a bit.
welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the, the sound of Bach. And I'd like now to welcome my former students. Uh, first, Rebecca Landell Reed uh, and Ruby Brawlier. And I'll be talking to each of them. We'll have some conversation. Um, I want to find out what they're doing now and have you know what they're doing now. And so, uh, Rebecca, I'll start with you. I would first like to say that I'm so pleased that you're going to be taking my place next year doing the teaching that I've been doing. And I'm sure you'll do a fantastic job of getting more and more of the young, young people interested in, in this world. So tell me about how you got started and, and what you've been doing. Yeah, um, I got started on viol and, well, and Baroque cello because I was sitting in history class at Oberlin and the Oberlin Baroque Ensemble came in and played. And I had never in my life seen a viola da gamba before. And I remember so vividly that you were sitting there, Kathy, with this gorgeous instrument and playing music I'd never heard of. I'd never heard of Murray or Abel or any of these people. And I just kept thinking I have to get my hands on that. Um, so I started with, with Kathy at, at Oberlin and um, got hooked. Um, but I've also done a lot of modern cello. So I still play with modern symphonies, with Akron Symphony and Ashford Symphony. Um, and I also play contemporary music and I teach cello, but I also play with Apollo's Fire on Baroque cello and Viola da Gamba and with Lady Elise and Three Notch Road and other groups around the country. So I like to play as wide a variety of music as I possibly can because I get bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. That's like me. <laughs> so uh, you're teaching at the community music school now? Yeah, I'm yeah, teaching, right. yeah, teaching at the community music school down the road and also teaching some chamber music at Oberlin College to the arts and science students as well as some private cello lessons to them. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. wonderful. And Ruby, what about you? Right, so I kind of have to think back to when I actually first played the viol. It, I actually started getting into early music because of singing. Um, I always was in early music choirs or choirs that just did a lot of early music and I was in several ensembles and then by the time I got to grad school where I was studying modern cello I joined an early music choir that was directed by Joe Gosho and after a rehearsal he's like Ruby you should learn the viol and, and I was like oh interesting come to BPI and so I did I came to BPI I played the viol I got a viol and played it for two weeks before BPI and then I showed up at BPI and and played in master classes and took in everything I could. And it was very overwhelming, but obviously I was hooked at that point. So I finished my degree. Um, and then I ended up coming to Oberlin to study viola da gamba and Baroque cello with Kathy. And that it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, then I graduated much more recently than Rebecca only last year. So I've just been starting to make my way out into the world and this is a weird year to do that. <laughs> so a lot of the things that I had coming up this year are canceled for now. Um, workshops and performing opportunities, but hopefully some of that will pick up again next year. Um, and then I also teach at the community music school with Rebecca um, and that has been a total pleasure. Um, I'm really enjoying doing that. And then uh, the, the other thing that I get to do is I work with the Northern Ohio Youth Orchestra um, and I managed to convince them to start a vial consort. And so I have been slowly brainwashing all of the students I can get my hands on. And it's been a pleasure because they all just absorb it and are so excited about this music that they've probably not heard before. So yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a fun year. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I'm so excited about the work with high schoolers. We, uh, my work has generally been starting with the uh, the students at Oberlin who never, as Rebecca, had never seen a vial, and and but they progress very fast. But the idea of having high schoolers come uh, is is just uh, a what come to it is a wonderful new thing that we're seeing more and more, uh, both at at BPI and uh, at Oberlin. Um, I, I wanted 
to mention that the two of you are part of a group of, of uh, Oberlin grads that are in Northern Ohio, and uh, as well as the students here. And I had sort of a perfect storm. I had a number of really good players in the area this fall. And uh, as sort of a celebration of my last year, I wanted to put together a special concert. Um, uh, but another thing that Jim and I did, as well as BPI, was start collecting antique instruments. And uh, we formed what we call the Caldwell Collection of Vials. And it's uh, a group of instruments from the, actually the 16th, 17th, and 18th century, uh, vials that are all playable. And of course, uh, when you've got instruments like that, you want to share them. And so, uh, I decided that with all of these people, I had three really terrific professional uh, grads in the area, plus three very competent or more than competent uh, students at the time. So that made seven of us and we could play a group of pieces called the uh, Fantasies uh, of uh, Henry Purcell. Um, I, and of course I wanted them to be played on these antique files. So I asked Ruby and Rebecca, um, among the others, uh, to play on the antique files. And I'm just curious if you want to say a couple words about what it was like to do this project. Um, Ruby, you want to start that one? Sure. I mean, I'm, we're all probably lucky enough to have gotten to try these files many times before this point, but never work on a project where we were really bringing something up to this level. And that was a totally different experience of getting, getting to know the instruments and learning how to make them work, which is different than maybe our modern instruments were. Um, and getting to play on high quality trebles and tenors is pretty priceless. That's not something that you get every day. Um, so for me, that was the most exciting thing. I got to play the tenor part on most of the, um, most of them, I think. I played treble on one of them. And yeah, it's been really cool to just learn about the instrument and see what it can teach you about playing this music. Rebecca? Yeah, certainly the instruments for sure are such a huge part of that. I think the other piece that was really special to me was playing with, with you, Kathy, and, and playing such a wonderful group of pieces with you and also these colleagues that I've known since I was a freshman. Um, it was a little bit like a reunion and also a big learning process. Um, yeah, it was, it was a really deep performance. It felt like playing, like you said, uh, like a Beethoven symphony. It's, it's a, there are very short pieces in a way and yet in each piece, there's so much that happens. Um, yeah, it was a really special concert. Yeah, let me say uh, to the people that are listening to this a couple of things about the music that you'll be hearing. Uh, Henry Purcell wrote these when he was extremely young. He was 18 or 19 years old. Uh, and he wrote them possibly as sort of studies in antique style because uh, this uh, contrapuntal style of, of fantasy writing was, uh, was frankly out of date by the time he wrote these. The music is extremely contrapuntal. All the voices are equal, and you'll hear people copying each other and going in and out of the texture in beautiful ways. In th these fantasies, you'll hear a little more um, harmonic daring than you do often in uh, consort music. Consort music in general is uh, ensemble music in, that was written in England in the 17th century that uh, pr primarily for amateurs to enjoy their evenings as if they were quarantined, they had plagues too. Um, anyway, you're going to be hearing 12 of the 15 fantasies. You'll be hearing four, uh, 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 seven four parts. Uh, then there's a five part for, that has one voice just playing one note through the whole thing. And then the six and seven part ones are in the genre called Innomine, where Canis Firmus plays very slowly while all the other counterpoint goes above it. So 
again, this was a very special performance that had uh, that I got a chance to play with Ruby and with Rebecca, with David Ellis, who's an alum from the same time as Rebecca, uh, Nick Schrantz, who is at the moment a master's student, and Luca Stefanich and um, Margaret Klushnik, who actually is a viola player. Um, they were our students. And so we put this together and there's a beautiful video of it, which I hope you'll be enjoying. It's been wonderful to talk to the Oberlin community and to be joined by my students. I'm so proud of all the students I have. I've had a, a wonderful, wonderful career of of working with with Oberlin students. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.